coloring would cover those made by government forces. So from vigilante killings, the face of the drug war shifted to uh, vigilante for, uh, so rather, um, police operations. In the next slide, you have supranational organizations recognizing the number for the UN, High Commissioner on Human Rights. Um, they talk about 8,000 killed as of June 2020. The CHR has recognized 3,790 cases as of their EJK report 2022. And in the next slide, the ICC. They talk about 12,000 to 30,000 killed, and they're investigating the, these numbers. In the next slide, um, this is just a brief uh, video. Ilan, 3,000? I will kill more. If only to get rid of drugs. And this campaign, I thought that I would finish it within six months. But my standard then was the Bao City. When I became president, I had access to all information. And then I started to squeeze everybody. And then you realize that you saw it on TV by the hundreds of thousands. Ganon pala kalala. And there are about. And so for a president to the, the numbers don't matter. The more, the merrier. And now, how the perpetrators can be taken to account, you can have domestic investigations, you can have international investigations, as I have listed here. And in the next slide, uh, what, are, what is the character of these killings for domestic cases that would be either homicide or murder under the revised penal code? Crimes against humanity under Rome Statute, uh, Article 7, which talks about widespread and systematic attacks in the acts of murder and other inhumane acts. So it is a little bit different from just homicide and murder. Crimes against humanity talk about the whole lot. And for crimes against humanity, the numbers don't matter. And so in the next slide, we talk about who are responsible for these killings. So if it's murder or homicide, it's the police operatives themselves. If it's crimes against humanity, the most responsible would be the one who bears the greatest responsibility, would be the one who ordered it or had the responsibility to stop it. In the next slide, uh, he admits to the killings. Yung sa TV, yung tumatakbo, sa CNN, pati BBC, since yesterday, said that Duterte admits killing or shooting the criminals. <laughs> Hindi sila nagkamali. Putang ina, papatayin ko talaga magagawa. My campaign against drug will not stop until the until the end of my term. That will be six years from now. Until the last pusher and the last drug lord are... President Duterte did not act alone. And so he had policemen, he had civilian hitmen, and he had other um, civilian personnel who came with him from Davao. And they are called, what we call them, the Davao Boys. Uh, that, what, that is uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa in the photo prior. And here are the names of some of the quote-unquote Davao Boys, the policemen who we have come to know and have encountered in the cases that we have filed, led by no less than the former PNP chief, uh, Ronald Bato de la Rosa. It goes down to those on the ground, uh, as invited prior, Charles Owen Molinos and company, Ali Jose Duterte, Johnson Almazan, Lito Patay. I've also noted their um, batches um, from the PNPA and PMA, and there would be a correlation because they would be either classmates or upperclassmen, lower classmen. Uh, in the next slide are also key officials, and they might not have been in, uh, in the PNP, but of course, they were placed in civilian positions. Um, 
I would just like to point out the key role of the PIDEA because the PIDEA actually must have the lead, must take the lead role in drug operations. It, during the time of uh, President Duterte, he made the PNP the lead agency for drug operations. Eventually, it was adjusted, but well, until today, it appears that they are taking the lead in violation of the original intention of the law. Um, other Davao boys uh, on the periphery, because they're not actually from Davao, but they are well connected to these personalities. We have former Chief Oscar Albayalde, Joe V. Espinido, and uh, Marvin Marcos. There's also attorney Afelgar Triambolo from IA. Sorry, I, didn't, I forgot to mention that. He's from Davao. Uh, IAS is important because it is the agency, it is the unit within the PNP, it's the internal affairs service which should investigate these um, deaths during police operations. In the next slide, um, just briefly, this is the ICC investigation. We have started, we started with preliminary in examination and now on to investigation the office of the prosecutor actually has a website where you can put in information or volunteer information in their investigation in the next slide i just clarify what is a preliminary investigation examination rather and an investigation sa po preliminary examination ang tanong ano yung krimen yung krimen ba ay crimes against humanity sabi nila yes Next stage, uh, sino ngayon ang may kasalanan? And that is where we are at. The ICC um, is looking at who are responsible before they can determine who is most responsible. In the next slide, I have clipped a uh, portion from the application of the request of the Office of the Prosecutor to open an investigation. And they name personalities aside from President uh, Duterte. In the next slide, this is why we have information as verified by the Solicitor General, that five personalities uh, have been identified as suspects by the ICC. Uh, Bato de la Rosa, Oscar Albayalde, Romeo Caramat from uh, Bulacan, Elias Armata, Edilberto Leonardo. And lastly, Your Honor, just uh, last video, um, thankfully not everybody has died um, in the war on drugs. And we do this not only for the victims, the survivors, but also for people like um, in our next slide, people have survived these killings and they have lived to tell the tale. Meha Junior, pero maya maya pa, biglang gumalaw ang paan ni Maneha. Ilang sandali pa, umupo ito at nagtaas ng kamay. And what is frustrating, Your Honor, in these cases where people have survived, um, and even for the persons who have been deceased, the police file charges against them. And this is a complication that should be addressed not only by the PNP, but um, the justice system entirely. Today, Your Honor, we have um, the Rise Up for Life and for Rights organization, our clients. And if I might yield the floor to them, thank you, Your Honor, for this opportunity. Thank you, Attorney Conti. Uh, be before we, we actually did not, uh, of course, we did invite them, but we did not actually include in the agenda that we will, they will be allowed to speak. However, uh, Congresswoman uh, Brosas has asked the committee if uh, she can do the presentation while asking some of the invited resource persons to uh, give their own statement. Is that correct, Congresswoman uh, Brosas? Yes, Mr. Chair. Siguro, Mr. Chair, para i-expedite, i-question and answer na lang natin yung kanilang, um, supposedly kasi may testimony po sila eh. Okay. So, I if you can give them a few minutes para magsalita, it would be better. Pero meron din pong nakahanda na question and answer if ever na ano. Uh, kayo po ba yung meron? Kayo po lahat? Meron po kayong sasabihin? Lahat po kayo? 
Oh, sige po, uh, pero pwede po bang iksiyan ho natin? Baka abutin ho tayo ng gambukas na pagkahinabaan natin. So, who would like to start? Sir Chair, may we ask uh, Rubilin Litaw, because she's from Rise Up, to introduce yung ating mga resource persons.